Hello GHS, today we, we will be talking about the marching band parade, COVID case rate updates, and more. We will, uh, we will also have some sports news coming up. Let's get into the video. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and Moment of Silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now a moment of silence. Thank you. It's been more than six months since we've had a regular schedule here at GHS. Goshen Community Schools now feel ready to move one step closer with more students in the halls. Course three begins on Monday, September 21st. Freshmen and sophomores will return to school on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesday will still be in e-learning, staying at home, and zooming into your classes. Then on September 28th, uh, juniors and seniors will follow the same plan. Remember to wash your hands, wearing your masks, and keep uh, distanced as much as possible. The Goshen Marching Band will finally have a chance to perform this year. The band has not been able to perform because of the COVID pandemic, caused this cancellation of their competitions this year. Last weekend, the band performed their 2020 show for family and friends. Tomorrow night, the band is hosting a prayer for the Goshen community. They will be marching through downtown. The band uh, will begin their, at their practice uh, field and march down Pearl Street, then north on 5th Street. The band will march around the Elkhart County Courthouse and return to Goshen High School. Uh, Mr. Cox, the band director, is excited that the students can finally perform if you go out to wear a mask and practice social distancing. It feels, I think we feel great. We'd love to uh, get out there and just put the kids in that position of performing. Uh, it's one thing to practice and there's not really anybody looking at you because we're, you know, at night or whatever. So I think um, giving the kids an opportunity to be around a crowd, although not big, but as we move along the streets, the people come out of their houses and I think kids stand up a little straighter and march a little taller when there's, when there's someone watching. So we're anxious for that. In order for the choir to follow social distancing, they decided to sing outside. Here's a video of the Crimson Airs Choir singing outside. Construction began last week on the parking lot. Uh, workers are installing a permanent walkway for students to be dropped uh, off and walk into school safely. The construction will also add 30 new parking spaces for students. We'll hear more next week from Mr. Pickard about this project. He'll tell us how this will improve student safety. The, uh, the Radio Horizonte is hosting a food distribution next Saturday, September 26th from 10 a.m. to noon. They are also giving away face masks and hand sanitizer. The first drive will be hosted at St. John the Evangelist in Catholic Church. Radio Horizonte will hold two more giveaways. The next one will be on October 31st at North Goshen Mennonite Church. The last drive returns to St. John again on November 21st. If you have any questions or want to volunteer, look up Radio Horizonte 104.3 official on Facebook. GTV will begin broadcasting a weekly radio news program starting tomorrow. The program will run before school from 7.30 to 8 a.m. GTV is teaming up with Radio Horizonte. You will be able to find the broadcast on TuneIn by looking up Radio Horizonte, or you can find it on your radio at 104.3 FM. You can check it out in the morning. Students will broadcast the program in English and then in Spanish. GTV will also live stream the rest of this year's football games. The games will, mm, will be paid per view and can be found on the website GoshenRedHawks.org. The first home game is in two weeks. If you're interested in attending Drama Club this year, make sure to send Ms. Pobosik an email. Her email is right here. Your name will then be put on a list so you can receive updates for future meetings. She hopes to start with virtual meetings in the next few weeks. Ms. Pobosik says you don't need any acting or stage experience to attend. Have you ever heard of unified flag football? This, the sports athletes are a combination of normal and special needs students. 
They play for the uh, sole um, purpose of having fun and no negativity uh, among the team. It's a great experience to get to play with uh, others and watch them grow in amazing ways. The Goshen School's athletic uh, uh, board treats it the same as any other sport like football or baseball. Any person can join and play with the team. There are no boundaries that prevent you from joining. The team plays multiple games, some are at Goshen High School and others at, are at um, the competition schools. Let's go! A new Mario game is coming out with three remasters of old Mario titles. This collection includes Super Mario 64, Super Mario, 60, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. It officially releases tomorrow, but only for a limited time. The game stops selling on March 31st in this year. We need some sports action in this episode. Let's roll on over with Drew. He's going to talk about the football game tomorrow and more. Good morning, my fellow sports lovers. Let's get into these sports announcements. All right, so due to COVID-19, the football team was in quarantine for 14 days, missing the Mishawaka and the Northwood game. Our players are back now and ready to take the field against Concord. For boys tennis, the Red Hawks tennis team uh, lost to a strong Concord team to 1-4 on Tuesday. The GHS Red Hawk boys varsity soccer team traveled to visit the home of the Bethany Christian Bruins and came away with a victory of a score of 3-0. The Goshen girls varsity soccer team lost to an undefeated 5th ranked St. Joe 7-0. Abril Diaz had 10 saves in the goal. Goshen overall record is 5-5 in their conference re record is 2-3. Red Hawks traveled to Northwood on Tuesday. The girls and boys cross country teams comp competed at the NLC Round Robin re uh, Super Duel number two. Both teams will compete Saturday at the West Noble in in Invitational. The Lady Redhawks completed their uh, competed against Jimtown and Westview on Tuesday night at Black Squirrel. Goshen represented their senior their three seniors Estella Borden, McKenna Kripe, and Jenna Vanderway. And Goshen broke 200 and beat Westview and Jimtown. With, its, with a team score of 194. The girls volleyball beat Fairfield 3-2. Goshen defeats Fairfield in five sets. The Goshen Unified Red Hogs varsity flag football team traveled to Wawasee High School uh, for their season opener on Tuesday and lost, to, lost at 26-54. Here's a clip of Tanner Powell uh, scoring for Red Hawks. That's it for GTV Sports. Back to Ryan and Graham. Let's go to weather with Cameron. It shouldn't be a huge concern because you shouldn't be outside all the time. But let's find out anyways. The weather? Simple. Today will be partly cloudy with a high of 61 and a low of 41. Friday will be a sunny day with a high of 63 and a low of 42. Saturday will be much of the same with a mostly sunny day with highs and lows of 63 and 40. And finally, sunny will get up to a sunny 67 and eventually drop down to a low point of 44. A few months ago, before all the schools shut down, I recorded a GTV tries video where I found the coldest water fountain in GHS. Let's watch it right now. Water fountains, it refreshes us with its cold water. But the question is, which one is the coldest? Welcome to GTV Tries. Now, in order to figure out which water fountain is the coldest, we have to test out all of the water fountains in the school. Check out this water fountain all the way out here. Now let's test it out. Ten out of ten water fountain. Oh my goodness, this is going to take a really, really long time. So we have these four water fountains right here, and we're going to test out every single one. 
pretty cold. <laughs> this one is gross. Don't ever try this one. I mean, do you do you see that? <laughs> Look at that, it's barely, there's barely any water coming out of it. Oh, they're water fountains. <laughs> the smaller one's colder. The first, second one's better. There's four water fountains again. Well, we already know this one ain't gonna work. We have finally gathered our data. Now, I will be announcing the winner of the coldest water fountain in GHS. The winner is... This one! Or that one. I don't know where it's gonna be at. The editor just has to decide. Anyways, that is the coldest water fountain in GHS. Why? Because my taste buds say so. I'll see you next time on GTV Tries, where we find the best store in GHS. I think we are out of announcements for today. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Stay safe, GHS. And remember, always wash your hands. Like this person right here. Wash my hands, do the wash my hands rap. Wash, wash, wash my hands, do the wash my hands rap. Yo, do it!